just realized that the laptop is not actually was not actually recording the service so apologize to those of you who are watching this online you've missed all the first part of the service we come to our sermon the sermon is mainly about Jacob Jacob was afraid we are told as a young man He had fled from home to escape the wrath of his brother Esau. You may remember the story. Jacob had cheated his brother of his birthright and of his blessing. And Esau had wanted to get revenge. And so Jacob had fled and gone off to live with his uncle Laban in Mesopotamia. Now, 20 years later, Jacob is on his way back home to meet Esau, and he's terrified. He's terrified that his brother might still want to kill him. Jacob has changed over the intervening years. When he left home to go to Mesopotamia, he was a lonely traveller with nothing in his hand but the staff that he carried. Now he's a wealthy man. He's accumulated great flocks and herds while he lived in the land of Mesopotamia. He now has four wives, twelve sons and one daughter. But he's had to work hard for it all. He, who had cheated his brother Esau, was in turn tricked by his uncle Laban. Jacob had wanted to marry Rachel. Laban made him work for seven years before he allowed the marriage. And then he conned Jacob into marrying the other daughter first. So Jacob was married to Leah first and then to Rachel a week later. Then he had to work another seven years for the privilege of being married to Rachel. And after those 14 years, Laban got more work out of him and tried to cheat him of his wages on numerous occasions. Truly, Laban was a deceiver of the first water. And Jacob had a large dose of his own medicine when he went to live with his uncle Laban. It was a case of the deceiver deceived. Yes, Jacob was taught a few lessons during this 20-year period. Firstly, he learned what it was like to be cheated by someone else. But despite all Laban's machinations, God still blessed Jacob. He wasn't worthy of God's blessing, but God blessed him. And he ended up with all this wealth that I just mentioned. And now he's on his way back home to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan with his family and all his flocks and herds. He had left home as one man and now he returns as a whole clan, almost a tribe. But I said Jacob was afraid, didn't I? Afraid of his brother. On his way to Canaan, Jacob would have to go through the land of Edom, where Esau had settled. So he sent messengers on ahead of him, asking Esau that he might find favor in his eyes. And the messengers returned with the news that 
Esau was on his way to meet him with 400 armed men. Of course, Jacob was terrified. He really thought his brother was going to wage war on him. Hastily, he divided his party into two groups. If Esau attacks one group, the others might escape, he thought. Then he prayed to God, save me from the hand of my brother Esau. Then he sent gifts on ahead of him. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, 10 male donkeys. He put them in the care of servants each heard by itself, and he said to the servants, Go ahead of me and keep the space between the herds. And when my brother Esau meets you, ask, Who do all these belong to? And where are you going? Who owns all these animals? You are to say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They are a gift sent to my lord Esau. And he is coming behind us. So he sent all these gifts ahead of him, hoping that this would placate his brother. And that evening, he sent all the rest of his tribe across the the little stream Jabbok, and he spent time alone. He stayed on the other side of the Jabbok stream, and he sought God's help. And that night, something strange and mysterious happened. A man wrestled with him until daybreak. We don't know who this stranger was, but Jacob said later, I saw God face to face and my life was spared. He named that place Peniel, which means the face of God. As Jacob struggled with the stranger, he found he could not overpower him. And in the struggle, Jacob's hip was wrenched out of joint. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he said. Then the man said, you'll no longer be called Jacob. You're going to be called Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Jacob limped on that hip for the rest of his life. Well, what are we to make of this strange story? This weird episode? Jacob's words tell us that it was certainly an encounter with God in some sense, even if perhaps God made his presence known through an angel but it was in some sense an encounter with God, with no ordinary human being with whom Jacob wrestled. And it was a life-changing encounter. It changed his nature and it changed his name. He was no longer the deceiver, but he was Israel. He who struggles or he who succeeds with God. And in some ways, it was rather like the encounter that we read about in our second reading with Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus when he met with the risen Christ. Although it was a real experience for Saul, it was also an expression of an inner struggle in his conscience. He had been struggling with his conscience for some time, Saul had. He'd been present when Stephen had been stoned. He'd heard Stephen's prayer for those who were killing him. Saul became troubled in mind, began to realize that persecuting the Christians was not what God wanted him to do, was indeed greatly displeasing to God. And I think all this was in his mind as he made his way towards Damascus. He was turning it all over and 
in turmoil, perhaps thinking, was he doing the right thing in going to Damascus to persecute the Christians? And there, when he met with the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, it was the outward expression of that inner conflict. Christ said to him, Saul, it is hard for you to kick against the pangs of conscience. His conscience had been troubled. And I think it was somewhat similar for Jacob, although we're not told in so many words. I think that Jacob also had become aware of his wrongdoing, of his willful selfishness, how he had cheated his brother. He realised that this was wrong. And he was becoming aware of the fact that he needed to be both reconciled to Esau and put right with God. This, I think, is what happened when he struggled, when he wrestled with that angel. In a way, Jacob seems to be struggling with himself and with God. If you like, you could say he's struggling to submit his will to God's will. And when he does that, he receives the blessing. It's all very paradoxical, isn't it? But to me, it's a picture of what the spiritual life is like. It is paradoxical like that, isn't it? If you are a Christian. As followers of Christ, all our victories in the spiritual life are actually God's victories over us over our sinful and our selfish nature. So it's all quite contradictory. And this is expressed in the words of the hymn where the hymn writer says, make me a captive Lord and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword and I shall conquer thee. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within thine arms, and strong shall be my hand. It's all very paradoxical, isn't it? But that is our experience. When we submit to God's will, we see the victory. As it says in the book of Common Prayer, in serving God there is perfect freedom. And so, through his encounter with God... Jacob was given a new name. He was no longer to be Jacob the cheat, but Israel, the one who strives with God. The next morning when Jacob went to meet his brother, he was a new man. And everything worked out beautifully. Esau accepted the gifts that Jacob had sent ahead. And when he saw Jacob, he ran and embraced him. And they both wept. And Jacob said to his brother, Seeing you is like seeing the face of God. He had seen God face to face the night before. And now seeing Esau was like seeing God another time. Being reconciled to his brother was to him a sign of God's grace. Now the brothers were reconciled. It's true they did go their separate ways later, but they were no longer in enmity. Jacob was no longer living in fear of Esau, and he was right with God. His conscience was at peace. And we can say that all these blessings can be ours if we, too, encounter God in our lives. It's very unlikely that any of us are going to wrestle with an angel in the way that Jacob did. And it's very unlikely we're going to have a blinding vision of the risen Christ that will knock us to the ground, as Saul had. But God will come to us in some way or another. 
Primarily, he will come to us through the person of Jesus, the Jesus we read of in the Gospels. And we also will have to struggle. We'll have to seek to turn away from our sins and submit ourselves to the will of Jesus Christ. By trust in Jesus, we can also know the blessings of a clear conscience. Peace with God in our hearts. The ability to be agents of God's peace among our fellow human beings. There's a lot for us to learn in the story of Jacob wrestling with God. Now we prepare to come to the Lord's table as we sing together the communion hymn number 942. We shall sing the first two verses before communion and the remaining verses after communion. Here, O my Lord, I see thee face to face. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. Here grasp with firmer hand the eternal grace and all my weariness upon thee lean. table is open to all who love the Lord Jesus Christ in all sincerity, to all who acknowledge him as Lord and Saviour and seeking to live his life. Therefore, let us join together in this holy fellowship. On one occasion, Jesus said, come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Apostle Paul tells us how this sacrament first began. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the cup after supper, 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us therefore follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ in word and in action. And may the peace of the Lord be with us all. Please turn to the people around you and share the peace with one another. But remain in your seats, please, but just peace be with you. Peace be with you. We're still not quite out of pandemic uh, restrictions. We come together in a spirit of unity and peace. Let us pray. Gwedion. A mair argluidama, mai a esprit and brasenol. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Dorchavuch ai chalonai, ve dorchavon at ar argluid. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Prone the alchir argluid ein dew. Mae'n iawn i ni roi eddo ddiolch all Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We praise you, Almighty Father, for creating all things and for making us in your own image. We thank you that while we were yet sinners, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to live as one of us, to suffer death on the cross, and to rise again for our salvation. Therefore, with all your creation in heaven and on earth, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Sanctae, sanctae, sanctae the argluid, the upob gathli agrim, neva dair sin llawn o thogoniant. Hosanna an agorichav. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in praise and thanksgiving, we now make this memorial of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim his triumphant resurrection. We celebrate our redemption through him. And we look to his coming again in glory. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bless us as we take of this bread and wine, that it might be for us a sharing in the body and the blood of our living Lord. Unite us with Christ, with all his people, on earth and in heaven, and lead us all at the last to feast with you in the joy of your heavenly kingdom. And unto you, almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. And so we prepare for the communion. Would you please remove the top layer of film, revealing the wafer, the communion bread. And so we recall. Arar glud yesi, an orsa bradach wedev a gomerod vara, ac wedi iddo ddilch, Ve torod a dywedodd, hwn yw fy nghorff a dorir er mwyn chwi, gwnewch hyn er cof am danaf. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Let us take and eat with thankful hearts. Would you now remove the next layer of film to reveal the wine? Arin Moth Hevid, they come out a coupon, our old super Gandwaid, a coupon hun, your cavamon now with them, Vung Widey. Go now hin, Bob Trower of Rev, Er Kov and Danav. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take and drink with thankful hearts. Oin do see than doing a mouth bechadir bead, tragarha or thim. Oin do see than doing a mouth bechadir bead, duro in e to dang neveth. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Father, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in the person of your Son and brought us home. Living and dying, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who have been fed at your table with this spiritual food seek to live his resurrected life and be the means of life to others. Amen. Let us sing the remaining verses of the hymn. Here would I feed upon the bread of God. Was an ither argluith, a bendith du hotla fliog, a tard, a mar barasprit lan, of the gadachui and wastad. Go in peace to serve the Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen.